Hi Tri-State, welcome to Facebook Live Friday. I hope that you have all had a really great week. Um, I'm gonna stall a little bit here for a minute to let you all get on. Um, I just wanna say happy International Women's Day. Um, if you don't know, 7% uh, of US truck drivers are women and while that may be a small percentage, that is still really inspiring to me because that 7% of you are breaking boundaries and breaking stereotypes and even though I might not choose to be a truck driver, I'm still in great awe of you and I think you're very inspiring to me. And so another person who is really inspiring to me, she might not know it, <laughs> is Vonda Cooper who is our guest today. Um, another statistic is that 23.75% of trucking management is women and so we have Vonda who is the operations manager which is so cool because you know 30 40 years ago it was almost unheard of to have a woman um, with such a position as this so to all the women out there thank you for setting such a good example for me and allowing me to watch you and emulate you so I'm gonna quit babbling and I'm gonna hand it over to Vonda Hi everybody, um, just to join in with Riley, um, we do appreciate all the ladies out there. We're fortunate that Tri-State allows our company to be a member of Women in Trucking, which is another great advocate for ladies in this business um, on all levels, so we do appreciate that. As I wanted to prepare for today, oh, one more thing, I forgot to say, if you're on this call and you're driving, please hang up the call. We will have this posted later on our YouTube channel, and we want everybody to be safe. Um, as I prepared for today, I got to thinking a little bit about um, positive things that have happened since our merger. Most of you know I came from the R&R &R group at merger, and it's been almost a year ago, which is kind of hard to believe because time has moved so quickly. And there was a lot of successes to reflect upon after the com combining of the companies. Um, we're moving in great strides. We're making great progress in our market sectors. And I think one of the biggest things that I drew upon for this visit with you is our driver council. We held our first Tri-State Driver Council in July of 18. And it consisted of five teams. We had a mix of owner operator and company drivers and we got together over a couple of days with management here in Joplin. We had dinner, we shared a bunch of great ideas, and we put them into action. And I think that's probably the biggest success of the whole deal is the drivers that were on that council are now coming to me saying, when is the next driver council? Because you guys have addressed, and in most cases, certainly met, and some cases exceeded our expectations for what that council is gonna be. So just a couple of those, few of those things that we talked about was, of course, you get a bunch of drivers together, you're gonna to talk about pay. So we made some changes to our company driver pay where we um, changed the bonus, the performance bonus to being paid on all miles, not just loaded. So that was a, a benefit. And also, as we continue to work through the year, our rates went up, um, both commercial and government, so the owner-operator's percentage was larger and they got to share in a rate increase as well. Another thing that we touched on was corrected customer directions. Most of the drivers thought our directions were, in some cases, just blatantly wrong, bad or unclear, and we've put it out there and we still ask for your help in this. I can call somebody and ask them you know, I need truck driving directions to your facility. And whoever answers the phone, or even if they transfer me two or three times, most people can't even tell you how they got to work, let alone how do you get a truck into their facility. So I really, we really want you to be telling us when directions are wrong and helping us keep those corrected and updated. There's a macro question on your seven that says where the directions and instructions complete and accurate. And if you put a no, please follow up and let us know because those, those messages generated by those questions go to some key people in here. 
and we handle those issues and we try to get everything updated and corrected for you guys and all the new drivers that, that might be coming in. Another issue with the driver council was our Qualcomm messages were considered excessive and duplicated. So we worked real hard to reduce the number um, and we are still working to clean up some of the customer info. In some cases we had, after you combine two or three companies, you combine all this information into one computer platform and you have six codes for one customer, all with different degrees of information. So we're working to clean those up, get down to one code per customer, so that you get the best information. But we need your input to see continued improvements. Another thing you got the driver council asked for was GPS coordinates be added to our major customers. That is still a work in progress. Um, we're getting a lot of them on the majors, but we'd like to be able to do that on all of them because sometimes an address in your GPS is not, is not good. They may want you at a bunker site instead of at a, at a actual building facility office situation. So we're working on getting those things adjusted and get the GPS coordinates in there for you. Um, I had already mentioned the questions on the macro seven or empty call. Um, a lot of times when we get those responses, the first question on the macro is were you treated with respect? And we're getting no in a lot of cases. Um, and then when we follow up with the driver, the driver's saying, no, I was treated with respect, it's fine. Um, I don't know why I hit no, I thought I'd hit yes. So either one of two things is happening, either you're, the system is somehow putting an in in there, if you meant a why, we're checking that. Also, you know, if it is a no, don't be afraid when we call to tell us, you know, what the issues were. We understand that, you know, everybody has a bad day. We shouldn't show it at our customer locations and a customer should certainly should not treat you um, with no respect. So please let us know if, if there is an issue and we'll, we'll take it to heart and address it for you. Uh, extended coverage was another topic of our driver council. And we've made several enhancements over the last year, adding both day and evening supervisors. Um, we've added in count to our, over, our after hours group. And in the near future, we're looking to bring our after hours operations people and our maintenance people into the same area. Um, I'm a big proponent of um, osmosis. You may not be on the phone with that person, but if you're overhearing a conversation, you're going to gather information that could be important to you as you go down the, or as you go through your day and make decisions. So we're trying to get the synergies gained by combining those two, two groups, and there'll be more on that coming up in the next week or so. The other question the driver council wanted was a driver app, and that is a work in progress. Um, we're hoping that testing could begin as early as next week. And the first people that we'll reach out to um, will be the driver council members. Let them test the app that was their idea, see what we can do to make it better, see what doesn't work before we put it out to the fleet. Because that would just be overwhelming if we put something out there and it doesn't work and everybody lets us know. So we'll test and then we'll, we'll get that out to the fleet as soon as we can. Uh, the last thing I wanted to talk about that the driver council mentioned was an improved phone system. Now you need to know that we're still working with two, if not three, phone systems. Um, we've got them talking between the two systems pretty good, but um, we're still in conversations to improve the functions of those systems that we have in place. And it's my understanding that we will have one phone system and have it in place by year's end. Um, talking a little bit about the phones, I want to mention, I think Chris talked about it last week, the 877-860-1600 number. You've started seeing it at the bottom of a lot of your macros, and that's the number we want you to use because that phone number goes to an auto attendant. Now, I don't like them either. I'm the first one that the minute I hear an auto attendant, I'll push zero. But we ask you to please not do that because your call will get handled quicker if you follow the prompts 24 hours a day, seven days a week when this thing's on. That'll get you to, if not your driver manager, to at least somebody in the driver manager group. So we want to try to get you helped as quickly as possible, but your patience, and I'll work on mine, but your patience is required to work through the auto attendant system. 
And all that said about the driver council meeting, we're looking forward to our 2019 council and we'll have more information regarding those meetings in the coming months. A few of the other topics I wanted to touch on, I've got the document here that outlines the March 2019 retention and production bonus. There were 28 over the road drivers and seven drum drivers that shared in $187,878 in bonus. That's a huge amount guys. And I mean, we talk about it all the time, but it's, it's just excellent that the company realizes your value. And one thing I wanna to touch on, Roadmaster Group generously offers all company over the road teams a weekly salary. But what you can do to enhance your pay is the more miles you can run legally and safely can positively impact your weekly performance bonus and this retention bonus. Because both of those additional pays are based on your miles ran. And as an operations person, we're always encouraging you to be available to run, always within the parameters of legality and safety, and enhance your pay. Uh, driver survey. Along with the retention and production bonus, you're asked to complete a driver survey. So during the month you become available for your retention bonus, you'll be asked to complete an online driver survey. And we really want you to be honest. Um, there's no penalty for honesty. You can be anonymous from my understanding or not, however you wish to do it. But the best way for us to know what areas need improvement is for you to tell us. We'll all be professional and we'll handle it, but if it's not what you think it should be, please speak up through your survey or at any time to your driver manager, myself, Jeanette Denton, anybody that's available because we want to be the best we can for you guys. Something else we're seeing some difficulty with and it's not everybody, it's just hit and miss, but I thought it worth bringing up is we use military time otherwise known as the 24-hour clock to dispatch trucks and write our work orders. So if you're unfamiliar with military time, visit with your driver manager. There's tools online such as this one I pulled off this morning. It's a military time chart and it gives you the 12-hour AM PM clock alongside the 24-hour military time. It's something you could easily refer to and keep you on track. We've had a couple of service failures because um, military time wasn't known by the driver and we have got to stay on top of that. Um, and remember, we always use local time for where you are picking up or delivering. So if you're in Indiana or, well, not a good choice. If you're in Arkansas and you're delivering to New Jersey, that time in there is for when that time in New Jersey. So familiarize yourself with military time. It's gonna save a lot of headaches and and, you know, like I said, there are cheat sheets and charts and all that on the internet if you just Google 24-hour clock or military time. Another issue that we've had recently is bridge law. Lots of questions coming up on bridge law. Yeah, I can slide the tandems to make the load legal, but then I won't meet bridge law for the states I'm traveling through. And we've had a recent rash of concerns on this and Quite frankly, we've had a couple of service incidents because there's been too much time taken to discuss this. And, you know, time's valuable and we can't cause late loads. Um, safety has been involved in this decision as well. I talked to Donnie myself and he's involved, but we feel that you guys are being delayed unnecessarily about the bridge law. In all the years Donnie's worked in the industry, and I use Donnie because he's much older than I am and worked here a lot longer than I have, he says he cannot remember a driver getting a ticket for bridge law. So the legal distribution of weight on the axles needs to be your concern, not the pin setting for the bridge law. So get your axle weights legal and roll. Um, I guess the last, one of the other things that um, one of the CSRs brought to me as a topic for today was when you get your information on the Qualcomm and you get your bills from the customer, we're asking you to kind of compare the information we gave you to what your paperwork says. When a CSR writes a load, they'll put in there what the customer tells them, but sometimes things change between that time and the time the load shipped. Um, sometimes the person ordering the truck isn't even in the shipping office. So it's just really critical that you look at the destination, 
Maybe make sure it's the same. See if they've added a stop off. Make sure the requested services match um, and owner operators check the rates on the things. You know, we could have made an error in it, entering the rate in the computer, the rate on the bills, if it doesn't match. Any of these differences, we need you to call your dispatcher because it's, it's critical. We can fix them while you're there. To back up and do it after you send the paperwork in or we are doing an audit here and realize there's a difference causing an error, then it's really too late to make any changes or adjustments. So if you notice those things while you're loading, please be sure and contact us and let us get in on top of it at that time. Um, another item from our West Coast CSR Carmen, I guess the directions have recently been changed for the Olympia Washington Yard. And please look at those carefully. And they've been updated in the computer. So anytime you're directed there, the directions are correct but they've recently been updated over what they were before and we don't want anybody getting lost. Um, the extended coverage group asked me to touch on New York Thruway permit for commercial explosives. Uh, the four items that they need to get you a valid permit are when will you be there to the entry point for the thruway, what is your entry point, what is your exit point, and either your email or a fax number to send it to the driver. And one thing we ran into recently was there is a note on page two of the permit that says permits expire 24 hours after initial entry on the thruway system if presented to a toll collector. All other permits will expire at midnight on their end date. So just know those and, and read the fine print. It's important that you realize, you know, what the expiration of your permit is because you don't want to be escorted off the thruway for any reason. And I guess the last couple of things, well let me pause. Have we had any questions? Um, we have one question from Jason Matthews and he says, um, are there going to be new council members in 2019? There will be some new council members. A couple of the teams that were on the council last year um, aren't going to be able to participate so we will be having new council members on the team. So that's a good question, Jason. You're, you're very active on these calls. Thank you for <laughs> listening and for participating. Anything that's all else? for now. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, touch a little bit on carrier performance. Carrier performance is something that is monitored. Um, we monitor it internally. The Department of Defense monitors it to great detail. Um, and a lot of our other commercial carriers provide us with service reports and different things like that. Um, we do a great job delivering on time, but there's some things um, that we need to work on. Um, on time pickup and delivery, certainly, but that's really pretty good. They'll even evaluate you on driver attitude, condition of equipment, it's all, it's all, all of that kind of stuff's a part of what they evaluate. And the best thing you guys can to do to improve that carrier performance is to communicate with us. Call your driver manager. If you have an issue at a shipper, call your driver manager. If the guard was hateful to you, call your driver manager. Let us handle it. Um, we want you to be in a good mood and ready to drive and handle the precious cargo that we carry. We don't want you aggravated over a situation, that's our job. So just step back and if you can access your phone, give us a call or send us a Qualcomm. Um, and I guess to tell you guys, um, you guys are the face of Tri-State. I don't go out and meet customers on a regular basis. We have our sales staff that does, but who our customers see over and over are the drivers. So how you present represents all of us. So that's you know why it's important to put on a good face. Um, we've been going through some um, office training here and it's, it's um, kind of some left brain, right brain stuff and how do you deal with people that aggravate you and that kind of thing. And one of the things that they touched on that might be helpful to the drivers is called the PBS technique. And the first thing they want you to do is to pause. That's the P. Just take a minute. Step back. Just because that whoever is being a jerk doesn't mean that you have to react in kind. Don't let them push your buttons. Take a breath. That just that 
deep breath, not maybe not a sigh, they might see that as a bad thing, but um, just take a breath and think about what you're gonna do and then smile at them. You'd be surprised how much better that makes you feel. It releases endorphins and it honestly catches them off guard a little bit because what they res expect is the same kind of attitude that they're giving. So it will, it will turn a lot of people to seeing things your way if you can just remember that simple technique. And the last thing I have for today, we've sent a fleet message out too, but daylight savings time begins Sunday, 2 a.m., doesn't matter. Um, set your clocks forward an hour. Now, Arizona doesn't participate. Hawaii doesn't either, but that doesn't really apply to you guys, but um, please plan accordingly. For the for the time change um, we're gonna have to we'll probably screw up some meetings and all sorts of stuff in here because it'll be a three hour time difference with Arizona instead of a two but um, just be mindful of that as you move into Sunday and Monday deliveries out there and that's all I had prepared any other questions okay well we appreciate everything you all do um, thank you for working for Tri-State we, we enjoy working with you, and if you think of something after this, my, you have my number. 2147 is my extension, and you can use the 800 number and that automated operator. You guys have a great day. We Thank did you. just get oh, one more in. Question. So sorry. That's um, all right. Sharon Wittenberg says, um, regarding, regarding the bridge law, will Tri-State pay the ticket if they get one? I, that I'll have to talk to Donnie. Sharon, I'll make a note. Um, since we've never gotten one, I don't know that that's even something they would thought about, but I will check with Donnie and get back to you personally. And it looks like that's it, so I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. No problem at all. <laughs> all right. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you.